let me show you how to segment your products in Google Ads. But wait, before we get there, we first need to understand why you would even go about segmenting your products in Google Ads in the first place. Now, the obvious answer is obviously, you wanna add in some extra layers of product segmentation to your Google e-commerce campaigns so that you can increase the total profit that your Google campaigns achieve. But that simple explanation and the reason doesn't explain the technical reason for why you would go about doing this because it does create not only extra work when you're setting up your accounts, but by adding in extra campaigns, it also creates extra work for optimizing and reviewing your Google Ads campaigns. And the simple way to explain it is like this. Let's just say you're an e-commerce store owner and you have a store that has over a thousand different product SKUs. Now it is highly likely that within that thousands, potentially multiple thousands of different products, you would have some products that would have a very high traffic volume and a very high conversion rate, but those products have one issue in that they have a smaller total profit value for you or profit margin for your business. Whereas on the other hand, you may have another different version of product categories that have a lower search volume and a lower conversion rate, but they have a really high profit margin. So you wanna be able to focus some of your spend on these products as well because every single sale of these products gives you a higher profit margin. And the issue is, is that Google doesn't know the backstory of these profit margins, or even some of what we would call like a gateway product. So you might get an initial conversion through Google Ads, but because of the subscription nature or the fact that they have to continually buy extra parts or extra pieces for this product, they have a much longer lifetime value. So there are reasons for why you'd wanna be promoting these type of products in Google Ads even though they don't have an initial high conversion value. But the problem is, is that the Google algorithm will continue to focus on those high traffic, high converting products because that's the messages that is being sent to Google in that they're not only getting a high traffic, so a high search volume, but they are also getting a high conversion rate. And if just left alone with no product segmentation, Google would focus more on those products. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing is because you are still getting a profit margin and you are getting an easy amount of conversions. But as we said, we wanna make sure that we've got some budget remaining for those lower traffic volume, lower converting, but high profit products. So the way that we add in product segmentation into our Google Ads accounts is that you set different product categories into different campaigns. And the reason for why you do this at a campaign level and not an ad group or an asset group level is because budgets are controlled at a campaign level. So if you were to have a high volume and a high converting asset group or ad group in a shopping or a performance max campaign, alongside with another asset group or ad group that had a lower search volume and a lower conversion rate, the Google algorithm would automatically focus a lot more budget on that higher volume, higher converting group of products. But if we add in some product segmentation and bring out those lower volume, lower converting products, into a separate campaign, you are then able to ensure that that group of products is gonna be getting some money spent on it without it being interfered by those high volume products which are taking all of the spend in Google Ads. So using that example that we're currently using, if we had product category A that had the high volume and high conversion rates, you could set that budget at $150 a day. And then you could have a second campaign, which is focusing on that product category B, that one that has the lower search volume and the lower conversion rate, but that really high profit margin. And you could set that budget at $50 a day. What that would then mean is that campaign, which is focusing on those product A groupings of products, it wouldn't be able to spend that $50 that we've allocated to that product B category of products, which has that lower search volume, lower conversion rate, but at really high profit value. So when it comes to going about adding in some product segmentation for your Google Shopping and your Performance Max campaigns, you need to not only think about like simple product categories. So for example, if you're running a clothing store, a simple segmentation would be to put all your types of shirts together in a separate campaign to different types of hats that you're wanting to sell. But proper product segmentation also goes beyond that simple type where you're segmenting by different types of products. Because what you also wanna be looking at is you also wanna be looking at the expected traffic volumes 
and also the cost of goods sold or your COGS. So obviously it's a no brainer when it comes to that expected traffic volumes because that's the first example we gave is that if you've got a high traffic product category, it's gonna be taking a lot of that automatic budget and spending from those lower volume product categories. But when it comes to your COGS or your cost of goods sold, the reason why that is so important is because that comes down to the profit margins. So let's just say for example our shirts, we had a profit margin of about 20%. But then for example, for our hats, we have a profit margin of about 60%. It would then make a lot of sense to separate those products into different campaigns because that then allows you to not only assign different budgets, but it also allows you to assign different target ROASs and different bidding strategies dependent on the profit margins. So whenever you go through this product segmentation process, you wanna always remember that the goal that you're looking to achieve is to make sure that your different product categories are getting an appropriate amount of spending towards each of those product categories. So you're looking to avoid the case where you're getting those high volume products just eating up all of your budget and not allowing for any of that spend to go to those lower volume but higher converting products. And the other benefit of doing product segmentation is it allows you to scale your account in a much safer way. So let's just say, for example, using those same examples of the clothing brand again, we've been able to get our shirt campaigns to be highly profitable. We can start to increase the budget for those shirt campaigns because we know that when we increase the budget, we are now going to be getting a higher number or proportionate number of conversions. Whereas for example, it may take us another two or three months until we're at the level of optimizations to be able to scale our hat campaign. So what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna take you through a screen share and show you some real life examples for how I've added in some product segmentations to both shopping campaigns and also to Performance Max campaigns. And then in that screen share, I'm also gonna show you when you should not add in any product segmentation because the simple trap sometimes is, is to just think that you have to add in some product segmentation. And there's a good percentage of e-commerce stores that will never need to do this. But before we get into all of that important information, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young and I'm from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And while product segmentation is highly important, you won't see high levels of success with your e-commerce campaigns if you are not also using a very strong optimization strategy. And this is where I wanna help you out with my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist. Now this is a checklist that I've put together which breaks down exactly the optimization actions that you need to be carrying out on your shopping and your Performance Max campaigns and then it even takes it a step further and lets you know how often you need to complete each of those actions, whether you need to complete them every 72 hours, every week, every month, or every 90 days. And if you'd like to get your free copy of my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. But with all that said, let's get into the screen share. Okay, so the first example I'm giving you here is of a collection of shopping campaigns. And what you can see through here is that you can see that over a period of around about seven months, sorry, actually eight months, we've been able to increase that cost while also increasing that conversion value at the same rate. And we've also been able to take up and increase their conversion value cost to, we've now been able to build it up to around about that three. Now, the big way that we actually achieved this is that when we first took on this account, what they had is that they only had one shopping campaign. So they had everything running through this shopping campaign here. And then we went through and we actually broke it out so that we had different levels of shopping campaigns around different products. And these were all based around the different levels of traffic volumes and also their different target ROAS goals that we wanted to set. What I wanna show you through here is that we've actually also added in this search lost budget. And this gives us a bit of an idea of how much spend we're losing because of our limited budget. So you can see with this one, this is one of our ones that had a higher conversion value, but it also had a lower traffic volume. So you can see with the search lost is that we're only losing 2% of search volume because of our traffic volumes. So we've been able to separate that out and make sure that this is getting the required levels of traffic because it was converting at a higher level. And now these other campaigns which have higher traffic volumes, what we're doing in here is that we're not increasing the budget yet because we want to build these conversion value cost scores closer to a four, potentially up into a four and a half before we start to really scale up these budgets. But we definitely know that we've got our budget at the right level to be able to achieve those results. And now when we first took on this account, this whole account was only running at a one and a half. So we've been able to 
already double in the conversion value cost. We've still got a long way to go, but this was the main reason for why we were able to achieve these results because we added in that product segmentation so that we could really assign extra conversion value to these lower spending product groups. And you can see through here, the different levels of budget. So we've got you know 93 pounds here, this one's at 20 and this one's at 15. So we are using this one to really push through that volume of sales. And we're using these other ones to bring in that higher conversion values. Now I wanna show you another example and this is for a performance max campaign and what we're looking at through here is that we're looking at nearly the first three months of 2023 and what we actually did is in this one we added in some product segmentation around about the first or second week of February and so we're already about six weeks after that and you can see from here that this has really started to take effect we really bumped up our conversion rate you can see from here our conversion rate is up at 6.6 .6, and now it's up at 7.91 when it was you know pretty flat in and around those three and fours, which is still a great result, but obviously any business owner would take a six and a half and a nearly close to eight any day of the week. And we've been able to build up that conversion value as we're going through here. And the good thing that we've been also being able to do is that as we've increased that spend, we're also increasing that conversion value. And the way that we went around this one is that once again, they had one performance max campaign that had all of their products in the same campaign. And what we've done is we've now broken this out into two separate campaigns, one focusing on that core product category and another one focusing on another group of products that they had and you can see from here once again it was a lower traffic volume and so that's why we've only got a budget of $60 a day we are now in the process of looking to scale this because it has been performing so well and the other one is still taking you know the vast majority of that budget and that's because it has a lot more searches but if you come over to here and see our conversion value cost you can see that this lower traffic volume is appearing at 4.5 now this is a conversion of over 30 days so you can see that this is within the first 30 days what you can also see what's also happened by breaking out this group of products from this other campaign it's also had a positive effect so you can see that the spend has gone down by 43 percent but you can see from here the conversion value cost has gone up by 56 percent so we've actually seen a much higher profitable campaign once again the conversion value only went down by 12 percent but that cost went down by 43 percent so it's running far more effectively and we're now even even in the scenario where we need to go through this campaign because it's new, we're gonna be adding in its first target ROAS setting. So we're gonna be moving it well above that 100%. And this other campaign up here, this had been running and stuck at a target ROAS of 275 for a very, very long time before we took on the account. But now, as you can see, we're gonna be able to bump that up to around about a 325, 350 for the next period. And now finally, what I wanna take you through is an example of when you would never go about adding in some products segmentation. Now, this is an account which runs Performance Max. And you can see over here, once again, looking from this first period of this year, we've been successful in maintaining that. I mean, there was a little bump here in February, but maintaining a, a really good cost per conversion. And this conversion value cost is still really, really healthy, ranging you know above that 10, also up to around that 7.8. But the reason for why we wouldn't be looking at adding in any different product segmentation into this campaign is because the products are just so similar. So they've got one Performance Max campaign. They run in the baby earmuffs niche. So they've got baby earmuffs. They've also then got audio headphones and then they've also got a kid's earmuffs. And because their products are just so similar, there's no reason to add in that different levels of product segmentation because not only are those products likely to be triggered by the same level of keywords, they have very similar traffic volumes and they've also got very similar product margins because they've got very similar pricing and very similar cost of goods. So don't get caught into that trap of thinking that you have to always add in product segmentation. You generally only do it if it makes sense in that sense of that you've got some very defined different product categories that are gonna be targeting different keywords and you've also got products that have different levels of conversion rates and also different cost of goods sold. So I know that this video would have helped you in really understanding how to do product segmentation and when you would look to add in some different levels of product segmentation. But I do wanna stress two things. Firstly, make sure that 
just by adding in product segmentation, it's not gonna just instantly turn around the performance of your accounts because you need to also be making sure that you're following through with a very clear optimization strategy. And if you want assistance with that, remember to follow that link in the description below so that you can get my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist. And then as well, you need to really make sure that before you go through and add in some different levels of product segmentation, you wanna be using the correct structure. So if you wanna make sure that you're using the correct setup and structure for your Performance Max campaigns, go through and watch this video right here. And if you wanna make sure that you're using the correct setup and structure for your shopping campaigns, make sure you go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. See ya.